This episode of Bourbon on Ice, presented by your friend Frosty and your bartender Mike Whiskey, is brought to you by the Cape Media Center of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. The views and opinions expressed during this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of the Cape Media Center. Listener discretion is advised. Ghosts. Ghosts. Why are we going to see this movie again? Because we love the haunted mansion. Oh, right. Okay. Well, if Whiskey were here, he'd say, roll the music. Welcome, listeners, to Bourbon on Ice. Where we talk about everything nerdy, like gentlemen. Join us every week for our local Cape Cod take on, well, everything. Laugh, cry, be confused, and laugh some more. I'm your friend, Frosty. And I'm your bartender, Mike Whiskey. Stay Stay tuned. tuned. You think they'll like the episode? Oh, they'll definitely love it. Hello, everyone. I am your friend, Frosty. And this is, uh... Whiskey's fill-in for the day, Kirk. Also known as Circus Kirkus, as we call him behind his back and also in front of it. Just, you know, a lot, really. We are heading to the movies. And what movie are we going to see today, Kirk? Yay! It's The Haunted Mansion! But wait, didn't that come out years ago? Are you saying we're seeing the Eddie Murphy movie? That had so much acclaim and was just a regular humdinger, a... Moments in cinematic history which everyone loves and shall cherish forever? You're not gonna pay to see that. Yeah, okay. I may be bending the truth a little bit, but you people get where I'm going with this. It was not a good movie. Yeah, it was not the best of movies when it came out all those years ago, but uh, many years later, in 2023, we are getting a chance to make the wrongs right. As I said, I'm your friend Frosty, and that's Circus Kirkus, and this is Bourbon on Ice, where we discuss all things nerdy, like gentlemen. And today is a bit of a bonus episode. I know that we said we were taking a break for the month of August, and Whiskey and I are. We, you know, had a massive fight, threw things at each other, stormed out, said this partnership is over. I threw myself down on the bed and cried hysterically. Whiskey got on a broomstick and flew off into the clouds. It was very dramatic. I think he was singing the soundtrack to Wicked as he did. Mm. And look, Frosty has a big lump on his head from when Whiskey threw that book at him. The book was Common Sense. So now no one can say that Frosty doesn't have common sense. <laughs> yeah, that was terrible. <clears throat> that was bad. Yeah, I'm sorry, but this is not my A-list material. At any rate... It's hard to think when you're on the fly. Or in this case, on the drive. We are heading to Mashpee Commons because, well, it's it's a glorious day out here on Cape Cod, and for once, it's not the weather that kind of makes me want to rip my own face off. Actually, it might keep the movie crowd down a little bit because it's not humid, and people won't be trying to escape the heat. This is kind of the perfect storm, with it not being a storm. I mean, the tourists are out, but they're not in. And the weather isn't so horrible that we don't want to stay in. Yep, the miniature golf courses are packed today. Although we did stop by uh, the Cape Cod Mall earlier and that was just a sea of people. I have no idea why. It was. It was packed as well. Very strange. Maybe people doing their back to school shopping on the last day of July. Don't say that horrible word. I'm a delivery person. I've been enjoying the lack of school buses I have to compete with. Okay, so, uh, back in 20... No, actually, let me rephrase that. Back in 2003, the original Haunted Mansion movie came out. It's... Eddie Murphy overacted. Why was he there? I'm, I'm sorry to all Eddie Murphy fans everywhere, but if you could have told me they were making a Haunted Mansion movie, I would not have picked Eddie Murphy to be the leading man. No. The plot wasn't bad. Actually had kind of an interesting plot with good twists. Um, not... A lot of references. Yep. Yeah, not... I'm kind of looking forward to this new one just to see the upgrades in special effects. Gotta be great for this one. 
I think it's interesting that, like I said, the first movie came out in 2003, and this one came out, and and this one's coming out in 2023. So they've had 20 years to to go think about what they did wrong and hopefully do it right. And I don't know if the movie's going to be a success or not. I just know that as a massive Haunted Mansion fan, I have to see this, and I think I may be the only person in this car that's a Haunted Mansion fan, right? Right. Yeah, I'd put my bottom dollar on that bet. I should point out that the two of us are wearing Haunted Mansion t-shirts, and I may have stolen um, both Burton and the Hatbox Ghost plushies from your collection so we could bring them to the movie. Yes. (laughs) Even I didn't go that overboard. I'm sorry, but this had to happen. (laughs) At least you didn't bring my three little hitchhiking ghost plushies that glow in the dark. Oh my gosh! That would have been great! We could we could periodically shine flashlights on them and have them sitting in the dark of the movie theater oh, scaring anyone. Actually, those might have been a little bit more appropriate. Oh, why didn't I think of that? I just thought of it as well. <laughs> I'm also pointing out as we're sitting here that you have a Madame Leota like, bobble hanging from your <laughs> rearview mirror. Yes, I do. I, I think the two of us may have just the right amount of enthusiasm to see this movie. And, of course, don't forget the decal on my back window. Yep, that would be the The Hitchhiking hitchhiking Ghosts, Gus, Ezra, and Phineas. Yep. That that proves just how much of a uh, Haunted Mansion fan you are. If you can not only identify the ghosts as not just, oh, those are from Haunted Mansion, but those are the Hitchhiking Ghosts, and you can name them. But it'll Even further, if you can point to each one and name which one is which, which we can do. We will try not to be Haunted Mansion weenies during the movie, though. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, they did that thing! That's that! That's from that thing! Oh my gosh, look at that! No, we won't be saying, oh look, it's little Leota. No. I can just imagine, you know, being picked up and hurled out of this movie theater by very angry people because we won't shut the hell up. No, not gonna happen. Yeah. We're not those people. No. We're also not those people that would go on the ride and recite the whole opening. Um, um, uh, yeah, 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 to- totally. Th- those people are, like, are the worst. <clears throat> really, Frosty? Yeah, yes, really? Yes. Don't tell me you're one of them. I- I'm one of them. Please. Uh, okay, so I may have taken both Rob and Robert to... What is known affectionately as the happiest place on earth, but there's some contention now. And we may have gotten on the Haunted Mansion ride, and I may have recited it word for word, verbatim. Wow. Hi. Because I'm one of those people. But what happens if they do it in the movie? You're not going to recite it here. This isn't the Rocky Horror Picture Show. You will never get me to that. Never. Never. Okay, uh, let's take a quick look at this movie. We have not been doing too much, you know, in-depth research. For all we know, this thing could be a a flaming failure. We meant to go on Friday, but, you know, our lives, situations, we both work, stuff. So we avoided it. So now we are seeing it on Sunday for a matinee. All right. So this movie is two hours and two minutes. Uh, It's a family comedy drama with fantasy horror themes and mystery. The theme here is a single mom named Gabby hires a tour guide, a psychic, a priest, and a historian to help exercise her newly bought mansion after discovering it is inhabited by ghosts. Yay! Just like my house. Oh my gosh. It kind of... Your house is not a mansion, but yes. (laughs) Uh, Robert, Whiskey, and I did an episode of, uh, of hauntings, and I said, okay, well... I remember one haunt. No, wait, two haunt. No, wait, three. And they're all from Kirk's place. (laughs) But the Haunted Mansion has 999. I just have one. Technically, you may have three. Your your landlord has referred to them in the plural. Well, she's never seen, like, the full-sized whatever that seems to be in my apartment. But she does have children up in the second floor. Yes, everyone wants ghost children roaming around their house. It's truly magical. That reminds me of that uh, Kathy Bates commercial where she's 
talking to her, uh, I think it's her accountant, saying, you know, like, um, this house I just bought is full of ghost children. Can I claim them as dependents? I'd rather have ghost children than real children. No, you'd rather have cats, which are arguably worse. Oh, I love kitties. I just found out that my, that the love of my life, my nephew, my four-year-old nephew, he loves cats. Th this may destroy our relationship. What a smart kid. <laughs> I, I don't know what to think anymore. I don't know what to think anymore. Now, if he doesn't know what to say anymore, we'd be fortunate. Oh, shut up. <laughs> okay, so looking over this movie, uh, we have Lakeith Stanfield, Rosario Dawson, Owen Wilson, Tiffany Haddish, I hope I said that right, Danny DeVito, Jamie Lee Curtis, Chase Dillon, Jared Leto, J.R. Aducci, Creek Wilson, Ben Bladen, Lindsay Lamb, Charity Jordan, I'm, I'm running out of names here that I recognize, I think we're getting into just like the background characters now, oh I see Joe Coy is in it, but this is, wow, did I read that right? Yes I did, <laughs> we have Mary Lou Henner is in here somewhere. The reason why this is a high budget film. I hear that this movie cost... Wait, didn't you tell me the budget? It's like over $170 million. $170 million. So they are banking like crazy on this thing taking home the gold. And it did not do fabulous on opening Friday, but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it could become a cult classic. People could actually like it. Or, as I've said, it could go down in a flaming wreck. Well, could be, could be there for the long run. All we know is that there is a significant chance that this will be better, a hundred times better, than the, Eddie Murphy. than the Eddie Murphy version. Yes. Uh, from what we've seen from initial trailers, they are including such uh, favorites as the Hatbox Ghost, the... I, what would you call that thing? The, um, the, the portraits that change. Yeah, the changing portraits we've seen. The, the ballroom. Endless, the endless hallway, the organist. The ballroom scene with the party and the dancers. Madame Leota. Madame Leota, of course. I believe there's also Little Leota, which is awesome because we're going to get to hurry back. back. Hurry back. back. Make sure to bring your death, death certificate. I know that's meant to be charming and funny, but it kind of screwed with me as a child. I also thought that, you know, you literally couldn't die without one. So I started carrying one, a, a, a literal piece of paper that said death certificate. I put it in my backpack. When it was eventually found by teachers, boy, was that a parent-teacher conference to remember. One of many, I'm sure. <laughs> you know me so well. I do. Okay, um, before we head into this movie, I let's talk really quick. What is it about the Haunted Mansion that you, yourself, loves? Uh, well, I experienced it as a child at Disneyland um, when the ride first opened, uh, I believe, 1968 uh, in New Orleans Square section of Disneyland. And it did scare me as a young child. But I also was very intrigued by it. And I've always liked the, the thought of afterworld or that there are ghosts out there and monsters and aliens and i believe in all that stuff so the haunted mansion was really um scary and fun at the same time and the ride originally um in california is kind of set up that way that it really is more sinister in the beginning and then becomes more light-hearted and that's from the design aspect i guess two designers worked on the ride and one did the first half, one did the second, and they had different visions for the ride. But it all blended greatly, um, and I've just always loved it. I want to point out that uh, one of the major themes that was in the original walkthrough version of this, we're talking like precursor, and even stuff that was left on the cutting room floor, was there was a heavy nautical theme. There were going to be giant octopuses there were going to be literal shipwrecks there was a whole lore they'd come up with about a ship captain most of this does not exist but true died in the wool fans of the haunted mansion can tell you all about this sort of stuff and as we live on cape cod we have our 
our share of shipwrecks, <laughs> ghosts, uh, pirate crews, and all that stuff that has made its way into our our lore. So it's it's kind of interesting that it changed, but we still feel at home with it despite all that. Well, here being my being a West Coaster, uh, boo being, boo, being um, raised in California. Um, born in Florida, raised in California, moved back to Florida, then up to lovely Cape Cod. Um, my influences are definitely Dis- Disneyland born. But people on the East Coast, um, for natural reasons, are more prone to like Disney World because that's what they grew up with or, or travel to because it's the cheaper travel to. And the mansions are really different, yet the same. We're talking different as in the way you enter it, the pre-show, the architecture, the ride itself, even some of the characters. Yeah. Well, with Disneyland, as um, Frosty the original. was as Fro- as Frosty was alluding to, that it was intended to be a walkthrough attraction, and one of the reasons being that the the big building that the that houses the attraction is on the other side. It's not within the footprint of the park, so. You had to walk uh, once you went through the stretching room, which actually stretched down. Is it actually stretching, is or is your imagination? Well, in Disneyland, you go down, because you have to walk under the train tracks to get to the ride itself. Whereas in Florida, at Disney World, the room itself stretches up, and you still remain on the same level. Um, so... Part of the walkthrough does exist at Disneyland, and you don't find it really at all at Disney World. You go basically right from the stretching room to the queue. Um, so those are some of the differences. I believe it's a longer ride at Disneyland, slightly. Maybe. I think you're right about that. But when they ordered the parts and the everything for Disneyland... They knew Disney World was in the works, so everything was doubled. So they ordered two of everything, constructed two of everything, um, and so the main rides are really all the same. All right, uh, we've got just a few minutes before we got to run in, so let's talk about uh, one more thing. And, well, and this is a question for both of us. What is something that you absolutely love from the ride that you desperately want to see in the movie? For me, I'm just going to say this right now. My One of my favorite parts, the favorite part of the entire ride, is when you first enter it in Disney World, you sit in the, uh, you stand in the, the greeting room and you see the portrait of Master Gracie age in front of you, withering away until it's nothing but a fleshless skeleton. And for me, as a kid, you know, I, I, I didn't know what I was looking at. I thought it was really dying and it was horrifying and it set the theme of the whole thing that is my favorite and i will be so disappointed if we don't see the aging portrait somewhere in this movie well so frosty's favorites right at the very beginning and mine is at the very very end i was always loved that little leota at the very end when you're on the um conveyor belt sort of uh moving sidewalk the the ride exit the, exit. the unloading part yep and then, again, in California, you're kind of going uphill because it's got to bring you back to ground level. And you see way in the distance the little Leota doing the whole hurry back spiel. Um, the, we've been dying to meet you. Um, it's just, it's my favorite part. And I always wondered, how did they do that? How did they make her look so real? Not knowing as a little kid, it's just a projection. But it was a damn good one. Yep. Uh, one more thing that I'm really hoping will be in the movie, because they were only in the, they were only like there for a, a split second and then gone in the first movie. The hitchhiking ghosts, as we mentioned, Gus, Phineas, and Ezra. At one point, Eddie Murphy's child glances out the window, and you see them just standing there in the cemetery, smiling. Then that's it; they're gone. Yeah. I- I'm hoping that they'll actually have like a role. And I don't remember in the first one. Did they have the caretaker with his dog? No. No, I don't remember the caretaker at all. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they cut in the caretaker because he's a much beloved character as well. He's the only human character in the whole ride. You're right about that. 
Poor guy. Yeah. I mean, poor, poor dog. Poor, oh, yeah. I always wanted to reach out and pat the dog, but, I you know, just, you're not supposed to reach out of a moving vehicle. I wanted to throw a burger at him. He was skin and bones. Aww. Speaking of skin and bones, we should probably get some popcorn. Yes, we should. We should probably go inside. All right, people, we're heading in. This is going to be cool. Well, let, let's hope it's going to be good. Let's hope it's a good review coming out. We'll see you in a few, uh, couple of hours. Bye. Yep. The Cape Media Center, located in Dennisport, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, is a non-profit community media center and the public access TV station for the towns of Barnstable, Yarmouth, Dennis, Harwich, and Chatham. Our mission is to build community through media, enhance democratic communication, and facilitate free expression by providing these towns with a state-of-the-art media resource center. Members can become trained in our video and audio equipment and produce their own media content. Membership includes training classes, access to our field equipment, studios and facility, as well as airtime. Podcasters and music producers can share their content on our website. For more information, visit capemedia.org. This episode of Bourbon on Ice is brought to you by Market Street Bookshop and Mashpee Commons, located at 31 Market Street, Mashpee, Massachusetts. Embrace diversity and find support for local authors and artists at the Market Street Bookshop, where your favorite new read is just a browse away. For more information, give them a call at 508-539-6985. And we are back. Oh, yes, we are. Did you miss us, everyone? And did you enjoy the movie? Because I'm assuming that, you know, when we took a break, you took a break, went out, Got some tickets, sat down in a movie theater, big bucket of popcorn, maybe maybe some nachos, uh, movie theater hot dog. Oh, I'm making myself Why nauseous. Why do people eat nachos at the movie? Oh my God, what a mess. Why do people eat the pizza at the movie theaters? It's still better than the nachos. Where oh. was I? Making myself sick? Where is that where I was? It's entirely possible. Oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> so Kirk and I... Just got out of the Haunted Mansion movie. If you're thinking that it's going to be the similar plot to the Eddie Murphy version. Fiasco. It, it in no way, manner, shape, or form resembles that at all. It very much is based more on the house. The characters are great. But they do really do a good job of picking up the elements in the ride. Let's put it to you bluntly, people. I enjoyed this, and I will probably see it a second time. I have other friends who will want to see this, and I'll be like, oh, oh, you guys want to go? I'll see it. I'll see it with you. I mean, sure, we sat through half an hour of trailers, but that's kind of like part of the movie-going experience these days. I do know that if you are a very dedicated Haunted Mansion fan, you already know the backstory or some of the backstory on the house. Well, this definitely drives it home and lets you know, because you don't really pick that up in the ride, the the full extent of the backstory. But now a lot of the characters make sense. They tied it in pretty well. Are we going spoiler heavy or spoiler? Let's go spoiler no light for this. No spoilers Sp at all. Spoiler extremely light. Okay. It turns out in the end, the entire mansion is inside a snow globe where Denzel Washington works. That's even... Too stupid for me to come up with. Oh, my God. Also, for some reason, Bobby is in the shower this entire time, and the whole movie has been a dream by, what's her name, Plachette? I don't know. Suzanne Plachette. I know. I'm shocked. That was the best ending to a series ever. Not to mention that at the last minute, you're going to find out when uh, the characters walk in and say that another one's plane was shot down over the Sea of Japan. Okay, we're, we're hitting you people with a lot of movie oh. reference. Uh Television show references. If you don't get them, you may be too young for this podcast. Yep. But moving on. We're going to go spoiler light on this. Okay. All the... Some very um, unique characters. And it wasn't infuriating. Some great ghosts effects. And it was actually scary. Uh, to some extent. There were decent jump scares. There were moments of very tense suspense and it went into action that felt like action um it, it kept it light i will i will say that it did keep it light but at the same time you did genuinely feel concerned for the characters special effects did not like drive the movie but they definitely added to it heart emotion a moment or two where the two of us teared up yes a couple of funny moments as well 
Oh but, my gosh. But we have not <laughs> we have not touched on the one thing that we can talk about as a spoiler alert, and that is cover your ears if you don't want to hear it. Product placement. That's not that much of a spoiler. I mean, they might as well know. At one point, there is an honest to God jar of Zataran seasoning. <laughs> that they turn the label so you can read it. Another one where the line is, I bought my tablet at CVS. And another point where we're treated to a, a, a beautiful vanilla scented candle from the Yankee Candy Candle Company. And they read it out. They said, yes, I brought my vanilla candle, candle. from Yankee, Yankee Candle. candle. And, um, and we also get treated to... Uh, McDonald's. No, Burger King. It was Burger, Burger King. King. It was Burger King. <laughs> it was a straight up Burger King wrap up. Because they had tater tots. <laughs> yeah. But there there were some other. Oh, Zillow. Very early in, in the movie, it's mentioned, oh, I found this house on Zillow. Yeah, they're not shy with some of the things they. Uh, the house may have a thousand haunts, 99, 999 happy haunts, but the movie had 999 product placements. Yeah, and blatant. I think we're still missing a few. I know. There's They'll come one, back to me. There's one I'm thinking of in that kitchen scene, and it, it totally has lost me. And there was another sign. I, I remember s spotting it as they were moving through downtown New Orleans. Yep. I don't know what downtown New Orleans is. To me, it's all downtown. They, I've never they been. Through, they, went through, they drove through Bourbon Street. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Which really did not add anything to the movie, because it would not have been feasible that the person would have driven... A car with their U-Haul hooked up to it through the touristy area to get to their backwoods mansion. That was a stretch. I'm going next year. I am going to New Orleans next year, but I know nothing about it. I've got ha half of my friends saying, what are you crazy? Don't go there. It's a horrifying place. And the other people are saying, go, go for the love of frog. Go, go get on a tour. I'm a tourist. I'm not above taking tours. No, but till, uh. During Mardi Gras, be a little insane. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, hell, hell no. I am not going to New Orleans during Mardi Gras. I mean, I, I don't even go to Provincetown during Carnival. Not sure if this would get edited out, but but Frosty is definitely not going to be one of those people that says, show me your tits and throw the beads. He's so, right. I won't be. I would not be either. No. Okay, so... Let's talk very briefly about the characters. Just pushing this one out of the way instantly. Jared Leto is in the movie. There you go. All the reason you need to go see the movie. Go see it because Jared Leto is in it. I will see anything Jared Leto is in. He's awesome. I kind of wanted him to burst into song, but he didn't. But at any rate, he is in the movie. <clears throat> Barring that, we had some outstanding performances from some very interesting characters. Without going in too in-depth, I will say, none of them were ridiculous throwaways. Um, yes, I'm going to criticize the original movie. In, yeah. two, in 2003, Eddie Murphy's character was a jabbering chatterbox of inappropriateness. They're trying to set a mood. They're trying to make things spooky. And he's in the background going, blah, 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 blah. And you just kind of want to reach into the movie and slap him. No one did that this time around. There were moments of great comic relief. There were moments that made you just want to like shake people. But in the end, every character had a, a, a role, a part to play. Some reason for them being there. And you genuinely felt for some of them. Anybody knows going into this movie specifically one character and that's being played. And that's Jamie Lee Curtis as Madame, Madame Leota. Leota. And she did a great job. The special effects with the head in the, um, the in crystal, the crystal ball. ball was really good. But it kind of stayed true to the original mansion because the ball really didn't levitate, did it? It did a couple of times. Okay, it did. But it, orig it wasn't always floating around the room. Yeah, it did levitate. Yeah. Right. Uh, oh. Oh, something I realized that they didn't put in. We didn't hear the, the famous incantations of Madame Leota. We did when she was reading the spell book. 
Only, only a little bit. Like right. they changed a couple of. There are a lot of references to the songs, to the lyrics that Madame Leota speaks when she's doing her incantations during the ride. A couple of other things, some iconic lines said by characters. Mm -hmm. Hurry back. <laughs> we did not get the little Leota that I was hoping for. But we did get an interesting Leota. Yeah. And 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 as I said, you know, we didn't get. The um, rap on a table, it's time to respond. Send us a message from Regions Beyond. No, let there be music from Regions Beyond. Oh, yep. I'm going to have to look this up. Yep, but we did have the ringing a bell as part of the plot. Um, you, you know, I'm just going to say this right now. There were so many references in there, but they were subtle. Yeah, it was good. I think this movie was made for the fans of The Haunted Mansion. Absolutely. It's not going to be a blockbuster success but I think it might turn into a bit of a cult favorite. Definitely a cult favorite. Yep. So I know I would, I definitely, when it comes out on a um, DVD, I would pick that up. Here's what I'm kind of remembering. The original Haunted Mansion movie, that was made for a family audience. Blunt and simple. They invented so much. They created all of these characters. They dropped them into the mansion but it was done for the families. This movie seemed to be made almost entirely for the fans because, as I said, everything was subtle. As in one character is, is said, I'm going on a journey. If I'm not back, you can find my way by ringing this bell. Every it, Haunted Mansion fan spotted the bell, recognized the bell, the design yeah. and everything, and that line. It is definitely family-friendly, though. There was no cursing, no sex, no... No controversial really, messages. It was really clean, yep. It was very clean. Feminist messages and yeah. very um, forward agendas and things like that. That people could say, oh, why did they put that in there? No, nothing like that. Yeah, that's not... No, no digs at one political party or the other. It's, it's not going to get banned by the Red Hat clan. Nothing bad happened. I mean... Like I said, there were a couple of decent jump scares, and there were moments that were actually quite quite intense. I know one spot where Frosty got the jump scare. You don't mean the, the gigantic tarantula, do you? Yeah. You know, I should just point out... <laughs> shout out to the uh, amazing people at Fast Pass Facts. They just decided to come out with a video that dropped today, and I just happened to glance at my phone and open up the video... 16 nightmare-inducing arachnophobia-inspired attractions. There's 16? There's 10? I will not be watching that. I can't even think of... I can think of one. Uh, I can think of one. Oh, apparently there's 16. <laughs> Speak, speaking of... um. Speaking of spiders and things. Uh, yes, there are some terrifying moments, but they're handled... Mostly elegantly. Nothing gross like it in the first movie when the child is covered in tarantulas. No, there really isn't a, a horrid moment anywhere. No, it's not. It's really not horror based. Yes, it was. Oh, I don't think so. It did a good job of being horrifying, but you kind of also knew, hey, this is a Disney movie. And it's called The Haunted Mansion. They also do a good job of explaining pretty much everything you know why on earth are the characters here why are they interacting why is the mansion haunted it, very little was left up to the imagination for people to fill in the blanks no it, it was a good good movie good investment folks and if you want to wait for it to come out on disney plus that's okay too or, or just come to, to see it on cape cod where the theater will be you know 90 percent empty try 98 percent I believe there was less than 10 people in this showing. I was waiting for a post credit scene. There is none, people. Leave as soon as the credits start. Anyway. <clears throat> I was waiting in the theater while Kirk went to the bathroom, and I, I, had, I was standing by the, uh, the exit door. The woman comes in to clean the, the room, and I pointed to literally the six seats in the theater that have been used. I said, oh, there are people over there, there, and there. She said, oh, thank you. That's all you need to sweep. Yep. <laughs> it wasn't bad. 
<laughs> it was not bad. And making a reference that we did earlier, or that I did when I said it's not the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oy. That's a tough theater to clean up. This one was not. But but remember what you were saying earlier. They missed a, an amazing chance. They could have made this movie. 3D with glasses called what is it you called it? Spectre Vision. <laughs> that would have freaking killed. In Spectre Vision. They had so many moments. Things kept flying right at the they, camera. If that was in 3D and the way that this was shot, it would have been really, you'd have been moving your head out of the way because there were some really great things that came right at you. Hey, Disney, if you're listening, this is a great idea. Jump on it. I mean, when you get like a a spare billion to throw into re-releasing the movie. Well, it was an expensive cast, so I guess they couldn't afford that in the effects. Can we just point out the... Uh, it, you know that that guy, um, Lakeith, who played uh, Ben, arguably the lead character? Yes. I, I enjoyed looking at him the entire time. He was a very... Nice He's, character to look at. Very stylish. Very nice. Easy on the, your eyes. The fedora, yeah. the necklace, the leather jacket. Those amazing shirts he wore. Yeah. And I love that Owen Wilson's character, Kent, never took off his leather gloves except for, like, one scene. But, you know, it's it's my kind of thing. Yep, he did a good job, too. Danny DeVito was great. That plastic raincoat. That was just so That's silly. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, anyhow, folks, um, I don't have much to add because I don't want to add any spoilers. But if you are a fan of Disney's Haunted Mansion, it doesn't matter if it would be in Anaheim or Lake Buena Vista, you're going to enjoy this movie. There you have it, folks. I'm a true fan. There you have it. Mr. Michael T. Whiskey, you stand accused by Sergeant Pepper of the esteemed Cape Cod Police Department of driving under the influenza of alcohol. <clears throat> Paralegals, you gotta proofread these things. Come on, you're making me look silly. <clears throat> Mr. Whiskey, how do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. But you admitted to Sergeant Pepper to being drunk on the scene. That, that's correct, Your Honor, but I would like to put forward that while I may have been drunk, the horse was as sober as the Pope on Sunday. You were driving a horse? Uh, no, sir. He was taking himself home. I was just along for the ride. On the horse? He's a good horse. Knows where he's going. That is a good horse. Anyway, is there any case law on this? Virginia, you say? Riding lawnmowers? Well, that doesn't help this case. Florida? Oh, no, I don't even want to know. You know, I think it was really sweet of those two women who uh, took our photo. Oh, that's right. <laughs> well, I, I paused to take their photo because they were in front of a, a big display promoting the Barbie movie. So they were all dressed in their pink. So they're doing a selfie. And I asked them, do you want me to grab your camera and take pictures for you? And uh, they that, loved it. That was very nice of you. And then... And then, and then I took advantage of that niceness. And then they took pictures of us in front of the... The movie poster. Movie poster. Wearing our Haunted Mansion shirts and holding our merchandise. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, I whipped out... We named, um... Okay, Tim... Corey Burton, right? What? Corey Burton was the voice? Corey Ver Burton was the voice that you hear during the Haunted Mansion ride as the ghost host. Mm-hmm. And Kirk here just happens to have a plush Haunted Mansion gargoyle, so we named him Burton. Yep, and he, he came in a set of two um, with the Hatbox Ghost plush. So I, I, I'm carrying a backpack. I whipped out both of these plushies. I gave one to Kirk. I, gave, I took Burton for myself, and they were just kind of stunned. They laughed. <laughs> you know what was funny? Like, while we were sitting out there waiting for the movie to start, mm. you could tell which people were going to the Barbie movie because there was an excess of pink. There was. Grandmothers that had pink extensions clipped in their hair. Or the one with the the pink pink sequin flats on. And the pink high heels. And the girl with the pink satin skirt. Oh, yeah. And then there was the, the boyfriend who had the pink polo shirt and the girl in the pink dress. Yeah. 
and and the little girl is going in, and there are pink dresses too, just pink, pink, pink everywhere, pink. Yep, it was cute. And we were the only lunatics dressed for the Haunted Mansion movie. Well, not in full costume, but close enough. Do you have a, a Haunted Mansion Butler costume around here? Because that would be awesome. I do have the T-shirt that looks like the Butler outfit. Okay, I know what I need to start looking for you for Halloween. Just, or, or your birthday, either one. Mm -hmm. Whichever comes for... Oh, gosh. Yeah. You'll just live in that, won't you? You could do it for Christmas or my birthday. <laughs> or a combination since they're two days apart. Not like I have never got a combination Christmas birthday present in my life. Merry Christmas and happy birthday! Yep. Everybody, thank you for listening to this uh, little bonus episode. Uh, as, as I said earlier, well, in the last episode, uh, Whiskey and I are taking a hiatus for the rest of the summer. You'll see us again in September. But right now... We love you all, but we really, really, really need some rest. Yep. So Circus Kirkus says goodbye. I am your friend Frosty. I am Circus Kirkus. This has been Bourbon on Ice, and as always, have a cold one on us. That sounds really good. We have a whole fridge stocked with them right now. Okay. To the so, fridge! Let's go. This podcast was recorded at and produced by Cape Media Center on Cape Cod, Massachusetts by podcasting duo Mike Whiskey and your friend Frosty. All music and sound credits go to soundstripe.com. Special thanks to Jamie Horton, Emily Tullock, Gabrielle Rawson. For more information on Bourbon on Ice, visit our social media page at twitter.com backslash whiskeyfrosty. For more information on Cape Media Center, visit capemedia.org. For more listening options and a variety of podcasting entertainment, visit our hosts at buzzsprout.com and katemediacenter.org.